passing of presidents and governors while in office. What does the Constitution say? I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. Over the years, some nations have witnessed seven presidents, governors, and even members of the parliament die in office. The recent one is the passing of Governor Rotimi Akredolu of Ondo State. Mr. Akredolu was popular with his call for the transfer of power to Vice President Goodluckabele Jonathan in, in 2009 during the crisis arising from the ailment of late President Umaru Yadwa. Ironically, his words calling for the handover of power to Mr. Jonathan, given the incapacitation of President Yadua, was deployed by the opposition in calling on him to hand over power to his deputy, Loki Ayedatiwa, in the closing days of his battle with his airmen. Joining us to discuss this is the communications consultant, Ake Fatunke. Always a pleasure to, to have you guest on Plus Politics. Greater pleasure is mine, Bola Oba. You first turning yourself into, um, what shall I call it? I won't, I won't want to describe you with some of the white um, okay. the people on, on CNN, but you are uh, an Lagi Digba, meaning you are an Iroko uh, well, when it comes to we knowledge. Mindful, we must be mindful <laughs> of the fact that uh, when I, I, I will need to leave, leave the studio at some point, and I don't want my hair to be too swollen so that the door will not allow. Most, <laughs> most, most hairs don't swell. They come in, but I, I, I actually meant that. Oh, uh, it's a real pleasure, much. and thank you very much for having me. Good evening, uh, Nigerians. Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we lost a very, very uh, voluble, eminent, uh, sagacious character in Governor Akredolu, uh, but unfortunately, the circumstances of his passage was not very, very edifying. For a man who, for many years, epitomized uh, integrity, for a man who, for many years, epitomized a uh, candor, courage, and character, uh, his denouement was a bit. Uh, was a bit uh, dirty and shady. Uh, but let me give you the opportunity to start the way you want to start. I don't want, necessarily want to uh, push you into the consumer because we have quite a, a num a quite a sizable time to discuss it. How would you want to, how would, how would you want to start on the demise of Arakuni uh, Akredul? Oh. Rather than going metaphysical, John Donne was very clear when he said the death of a man, any man, it diminishes me. And uh, your description, I just asked, Arakuni, Rotimi Akeridolu, was exactly the way you described and more courageous, bold. His place in the annals of our history, despite the obfuscation and the shenanigans that surrounded his death, it's, uh, it's not something that can be wiped off easily. Uh, I like to say that uh, Arakuni Rutimi Akredolu was a man of many parts. Um, back then in school, he was the uh, Metusela Songisto, uh, he was in the choir uh, back in his church days in Jericho, where he, well, we've been told that. Uh, Jericho Ibadan, I guess. Jer Jericho Ibadan, uh, you know. Uh, he, and he was very prominent. He was also amongst others, somebody who stood. Uh, from, from the. 
from the college slang that you used earlier on, uh, were you at any time uh, in school together, or are you alumni? Are you an alumnus of the same uh, uh, alma mater in any circumstance that he that he attended? Nope. But as a member of the Kegites, okay. we were spread all over, you know, okay, okay. Jambula and all that. Uh, he could break into singing and he could go into descants uh, during his lifetime. Uh, and you know that um, he was at the University of Ife, I was at Amadou Bello University. Uh, and usually we hold congresses go to different uh, universities and colleges of technology. In the glorious days of uh, university education. When school, when, when, when school was cool. And um, I, I, I dare say that, uh, ironically, uh, some of the things he stood for in terms of a constitutional order uh, were put to the back burner when the shoe, the, the shoe uh, got into the other foot. Because right there in 2020, around December, I don't know about this thing about December, that Aketi died um, this year in 2023. Uh, Yaradua was also confronted with that. And then we had a lot of dancing to the right, dancing to the left by what you call um, the inner, inner, inner cabinet. Uh, in Akiti's uh, case, we had people who perhaps allegedly were loyal to him, which included his uh, beloved wife, Madame Betty, his son, and some other commissioners. Um, at the end of the day, um, he was treated, he was vehement, like you said in your intro, and said, power must change hands. And when power must change hands, it must not be any other thing other than to go through the constitutional uh, provisions as well spelled out in chapter six, um, section 189 and part two of the 1999 constitution as amended. I mean, where there is ill health and incapacitation there are laid down rules of how this should be followed. It wasn't followed. And that was not alone. Bola, and you remember Dambi Pasuntai? Yeah, okay. I mean, eventually, whether you are an effigy, whether you are there or not, people will run the government for you. Uh, um, Especially those who are so proximate to uh, who are so proximate to the pulse of the state, who could use just about your image, your name, or their connection or proximity to you to go gaga. And not only go gaga, and do it very shamelessly. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, you remember Hiradwa's wife and the... And the, 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 the damn bazaars of this world. And, uh, and they all came uh, strong to say and this and was not going to happen. Uh, and Duaka, uh, as the Attorney General, was actually telling us that his understanding of the Constitution was such that the President could be anywhere in the world. And then, of course. And, of course, and, 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 be, and be governing us. And then, you know, we had um, uh, a very highly respected uh, former President, uh, Obasanjo, at that time. Um, gave us a bit of theatrics and was calling Yaradua, are you well or you are not well? Uh, that was actually <laughs> that was actually when he was foisting when he was foisting a man that he knew was sick or not. Allegedly and, uh, knew he was knew. sick. You know why? You know why I'm confident he knew he was sick. I was flown in from England. I was still domiciled in London, England. Then I was flown in to interview candidate Yaradua. And then you saw a couple of things. And when I sat in front of the gentleman, I was so pressed that I had to tell him that there was a whispering campaign that it was not going to last for four years. Can you imagine that? And because he was looking very, look, God bless his soul, very courageous, very honest man. And when I said that, he said, 
you know, he said the pinions were free, and he pulled this babariga and pulled it, and he, sh he showed me Punch. a lump of a destiny, and he said, he said he was sick. He said there was no, and he, and he asked me how old I was, and I told him, and he said, and he asked me if I had ever been sick, and I said, yes, I had been sick. And he said, look, I, I, I was sick, but I'm getting better now. And that there is no man that is, you know, that is immune to being sick. But it was obvious to anybody close enough to the man, however momentary, you, you could see that that, that was the person that somebody was calling on a sick bed in, in Germany and was telling us, uh, Umaru. Umaru, Umaru, uh, they you, said you are dead. Are you dead or you are not dead? And the same about Sanjo uh, much later. Um, when was the push, one who... Push became a show now was granted, you know, uh, the opportunity to see him in Saudi Arabia and then also made a pronouncement that... No. Uh, uh, this was, to him, sometimes it's like that. You this, know? This, 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 this man was it's very similar to what we had with um, Arakuni Aketi himself. And then, of course, he was shielded. And if you remember, this, the whole thing started in um, 2019, thereabouts. He was ill. Okay? He took ill. And I remember at that time, he did something that was not very common, unlike the Yaradua and the, and the Kebaya, the Toraya and the Kebaya. He transmitted uh, then to Lucky Aida Tiwa. Uh, but everything now started working in funny tones. By 2023, we now saw that he had to formally go to Germany again, spent uh, three months. But at that time, power was not, uh, you know, uh, transit. And people started wondering, uh, is the same Aketi? Is it the same Arakuni that will do this? Or was he within his ambit? What you saw in Yaradua by showing you that lump in the hand, I dare say uh, he was a lecturer at uh, Abadu Bello University. He was in the um, chemistry uh, department. Uh, he had a way of, you know, not this time, not with him, but had a way. Each time he wanted to, uh, I studied economics, but I had people who studied chemistry, and he was fought right to the hilt. And I will tell you exactly um, what, what the problem, problem is. The only family that I see that come out and say it exactly as it is by themselves will be the Ransom Kuti family. I mean, when Fela was going to pass on, so Liko Ransom Kuti the said, was complications are, you know, um, arising to AIDS and all that. So, but this time around, because we lack the structure, we lack the process, to maintain constitutional order. We were not going to follow it. Don't forget, again, comparing and contrasting. So, was it in 2012 when uh, they were not going to allow Yaradua to go and, and rest? One uh, Farouk Kaliu uh, of the opposition party took him to court. And um, I know Bamindele Aturu, also of blessed memory, he died when I think uh, uh, July 9, 2014, came out, they won the case and the Supreme, excuse me, the, the High Court at that time, 27, made the pronouncement, let the constitutional provision of Section 189 be followed. If after 14 days, you are not able to come out and say Mr. President was okay or not okay, uh, and then it ceases to be to be president. Uh, later, two now they said, now constitutional order is now in place. But what then happened? The cabinet members who Yaradua appointed, the cabinet members who Akeridulu appointed, say, no, it's, uh, they will uh, not uh, be able uh, to... God bless her so. Uh, they will not be able to do, they will not be able to do that, unfortunately. Dora then, they then uh, gradually now then said, uh, when you make a mistake... What do you do? Put your leg to the brake, raise your hands, and say, yes, 
let us do the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, was talking to members of his cabinet. I know there was also a voice in Akiti's um, position. He was the president of the NBA then. At, at, at that time. And I said, look, what are, we, what, what are we talking about? It is only, we can't continue to want to play God. I think um, Akiti, Akiri Dolu, place in history is not only a short, uh, I mean, you, you saw him in, in, in his colors, uh, the Yamotekun colors, and what have you, capable of speaking true to power. But I think people surrounding him, allegedly or not, members of his family, members of the inner caucus started playing Palungu, and um, despite the fact that Akechi himself, during his lifetime, when he um, chose Lucky and said, if you are a lucky man, <laughs> and that wherever I stop, you, you continue from wherever I stop. And in any case, I get the two it's now, it's not, it's not your turn. And people started dancing right, left, and, and center. And as we speak today, uh, Gbola, the jury, maybe not yet out, but it's out, uh, to say that uh, the intervention of Mr. President, uh, whether there, the River State, elsewhere, um, it's not constitutional. Um, it's still something that we need to see because at the end of the day, peace reigned, even if you are going to say it's peace of the graveyard, I pray not. And uh, at the end of the uh, day. Are you, are you going to rivers now? Are you straddling rivers with those? Because on those uh, peace, is settled now. Well, the consular the... order has taken over okay. by the circumstance of the passage of Akechi. God bless his soul. Uh, I really want to try my best possible to take this discourse away from his person, uh, but speak to the constitutional, the constitutional, uh, the unfortunate constitutional scenario that was triggered by his. Uh, by sickness, and the fact that some characters could have the temerity to literally, literally and metaphorically abuse the collective psyche of the people of Ondo State, and it is very likely that they will walk away with that. Bola, I hear you very loudly, and it's true. You don't speak ill of the dead. Yeah, we shouldn't. Uh, more especially uh, within um, the whole of 2023, in and out, was mud virtually when he came back in September of um, 2023 at his Jericho home, was not seen, was not heard. His signatures were, you know, were flying around allegedly and even to the extent that uh, the, um, the, the peace, and I agree with you that uh, yeah, yeah, death is the, is the end of it all. I want to pray that it should be the end of it all. I am not particularly happy at a few things I saw, okay, after the death of Aketi. I think it's um, like overreaching by some people. I cannot, for the life of me, uh, understand why aides and the uh, commissioners of Akete will come out and say, well, they will always continue to be, <laughs> want to be loyal to him even in death. I think that uh, makes um, a bit of a nonsense. I am not too sure that some of the, no, the me, no. some of the, so, so, some of the optics that I see. You are not, a, you are not a Nigerian politician. In Nigerian, some of the, some <laughs> of the optics that I see with uh, Madame Betty and some of this going on around. I really know, want to. I, I and, really don't and, want to discuss and, it. And, and all that. But all put together, yes, um, I think I agree uh, for now that uh, we now have a peace. I agree for now that that peace will remain as long as you know, a constitutional order is maintained. We see how to now get um, a deputy. Um, that shouldn't be much of a problem. It's the prerogative of, uh, it's the, prerogative of, the, of, the, of the governor to choose his deputy. That's think, the, things are not always as you seem. Uh, I, I am aware. And I quite agree with you. There has to be 
consultations, I know that uh, Mr. President, all the other stakeholders must all get together. Uh, I don't want the peace of a graveyard, but it behoves as a Yoruba or Moluabi uh, that I think uh, we all should be. It behoves like history should not repeat itself in the Adekunle Ajasi Omobori Owo that on those state virtually, uh, you know, got bonded. Oh, I think the, 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 people the, should now the, the scenarios are different. Calm down. What is not making that scenario different is what you call greed, what you call um, lack of a sense of shame. You may be surprised that at the end of the day, I pray, like I will always said in 1983, that I'm wrong. I hope we will put our noses on the grind and make sure that now that death has um, given, uh, let's say, the, the, the right legacy that is going to be indelible, all parties should now just calm down. There should not be any viciousness. It should be forward ever to the sunshine state of Odo uh, and backward very, never. It, it should be very unfortunate if uh, if there is any tinge of vindictiveness in the conduct of Ayi Datiwa, because let's be very honest with ourselves, he's a very fortunate, very fortunate man. <laughs> oh yes, his name, his name just practically is living the fullness of the of the prophetic majesty of his name. Of that name, uh, Lucky is Lucky. Uh, Ori Mason is uh, very fortunate. You know, he seems to carry a head that that takes him in the direction of good fortune. Uh, Orimison, that's the best transliteration I can give it in my um, in my uh, Kwasa Yoruba. Orimison, me, my head is standing for me, and no matter what you do, my head will stand <laughs> ramrod. And uh, the 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 family name uh, Ayedatiwa that he has uh, ultimately end. And the, 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 the world. But having said that, I wouldn't suppose if he's a smart player that he should be vindictive or be seen to be a loggerhead with uh, either the wife, the children, or the, any other person. Or the followers of. Because he himself was. Was. Uh, a very solid. Um, um, Arakuri said it when when he picked him. He said he was consistently standing by him through the first time that he lost the gubernatorial election to the time he won, and that it was only right for him, apart from the goodness of his name, to. But uh, you see, we the two of us cannot discuss this issue, like. Young stars in journalism will do uh, the salacious part of it, the the personality uh, cult side of it. I, I am not particularly interested. I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, and that's one of the reasons why I really want to engage somebody like you to speak to it. I, I'm thinking, there and I'm I, I'm having a panoramic look had the constitutional order that has made it so, so fluid that any time, be it Maman Belo Ali in Yobe, be it Dambaba Suntai in, in Taraba, now, you know, the immediate past incident of uh, Arakuni Akre Dolu, and inevitably, it is just inevitable that at some point again, be, uh, uh, President Umar Yad was, you know, very deplorable, exasperating, that the whole of the country was taken to, and it's inevitable. It's not that one is being sadistic, that at some point, a gubernatorial character will be sick, and he or she may not be able to function like we obviously saw in the case of Arakuni Akredolu, Dambaba Sontai, 
Maman uh, of Yobe, Yadua, and yet some characters so close to him would want to make us believe that even when it was when it is obvious to the whole nation, they have the prerogative to be functioning in his name. What does that say? Well, uh, the problem is not as corrupt as the constitution that we are talking about, which I have always said that uh, needs to be really overhauled anyway. As corrupt as it is, the constitutional order is there. It has precedence. I just told you about uh, the High Court judge uh, sometime in uh, 20, 2012 that laid it as a precedent. Look, yes, uh, people can get ill, and naturally we wish them well, but people can get critically ill. And the wheels of governance must continue. But what is not there is the character um, of the people first to interpret that constitution exactly the way it is and follow it. During year Adwa's time, they all knew that uh, within 14 days, call a medical doctor and then that section 189, uh, the, the uh, part four of that section, clearly stated, well, yeah, the National Assembly called the, um, the physician to Mr. President, physician to Mr. Governor, set up five of them, additional four medical doctors to examine, do it very quickly within Within 40 days, yeah. and then two well, thirds. Before, two third, before you get two to that, to vote. Before you get to that, point, but they will never want to do it because the constitution precedent is such that the beneficiaries of his grace, those that he must have appointed yeah. as members of the cabinet, yes. are the ones that are constitutionally laden to trigger to trigger the call for the medical examination. Not today. That you have battle of knock knives, that you have um, people doing things. In fact, the people that you appoint, the people that are supposed to be your right hand or right, you know, left hand men or women will be the ones that will do you in. Uh, uh, case of well, even outside Nigeria, case of Afro, um, Sankara and um, uh, Kampari, uh, case of um, Anwar Sadat. And his bodyguards, uh, case of uh, Murita La Muhammad, uh, who did all those kind of people in? They are people who knew and could. Uh, who did Kurida uh, Tabiola in, other than the people who know, who have first hand information that the way I am looking oh, at the things. Movement. Yes. Uh, so you decide you play Mag Lady Macbeth, or you, you decide that you're going to play God, or you do something and say that, look, before he gives up, let's extract the highest and greatest. It doesn't matter okay. whose heart is God. Constitutional order is clear. What is not there is the greed and the sense of shame. I will do it and nothing is going to happen. I mean, the people that um, Arakuni appointed, they were supposed to be his Men who are not going to be interested in his, uh, his legacy. And what did they start to do? Hey, that one must go, and all that. Yeah. And it nearly manifested. It got as bad as getting to uh, the chief judge of, uh, of the state, and they were going to look for one way or the other to try and pull her down I, I until she sued Ramrod. Point is. There are areas of our world, Bola, as you always say in your programs and your teaching, they don't have a written constitution, but they have written ethos. Sorry, they have some kind of ethos and ethics and morality that bind them, that makes them say, like we used to have in the old royal empire, if you do something, if you do something that is disgraceful, I mean, you're, you're kind of gone. So that's like lack of sense of shame. Is out. The same precedents that happened during Yaradwa, the same precedents happening during uh, Arakuni, and why? 
corruption? Why? The fact that, yes, I may not be there, but I will be the kingmaker. It is, it, is, it is a known fact that if you are the wife of Mr. President or the wife of governor or wife of local government chairman and stuff like that, you begin to wield some kind of funny influence. If you are the son or the daughter of Mr. President, whether it's this president um, or the former president, uh, some people allegedly go to pay to those people so that they can have the heirs of the president. It means, therefore, Bola, we are not practicing democracy. We can't say we are practicing democracy. Mm. We can't be practicing democracy and then, and then at the I, end I think, of the day, I, things I, will be going the way they, they have gone. I, I know. I, I think fundamentally, fundamentally, there cannot be a robust democracy where the rule of law is anemic. If the rule of law is lean, because we, many of us don't even understand that the full, the full uh, mouthing of the terminology democracy is democracy and the rule of law. Of course. And wherever people know that you can run rough short of the law and get away with it, Democracy will never, will never be robustly uh, planted. Why am I saying that? Uh, let's leave the political side of it. The members of the House of Assembly, uh, at some point I thought the Speaker of the House of Assembly in Ondo State got a bit narcissistic, he, like any politician. And I won't blame him for that. Like any politician, he felt he had an opening that if you could if you could muster the powers inherent in the house through his colleagues and get the deputy governor defenestrated, he could be the acting governor. And that would position him well for to as as an aspirant and an aspiring candidate of the party in the general elections that we hold in <laughs> sometimes yeah, next, next year. Very correct. Now, that, I won't blame him for that. That's politics. The disturbing part of it was when it became obvious that even some members of the cabinet were openly saying that the signature of their principal were being forced. And some people were coming out with two, were coming out with explanations that he, he had two signatures. I was even confounded. I, I, I don't know, you, you, signatures may change over time, but at any point in time, we must have one signature. So, I, I, and, and I was thinking, where were the, where were the Nigerian police operatives? Where were the so-called EFCC operatives? What was the ICPC leadership doing? And in that circumstance, hundreds of millions of Naira were leaving the treasury to, a, to very suspicious, in very suspicious circumstances. I just felt... We, we can never have a robust democracy. I can, I, can, I, can feel, I can feel your angst. I can feel your pains. But beyond angst and pains, you said it's politics. So yeah, it's politics. What is politics? Politics is who gets what, where, and when. Um, you take and bid for your chance, even if you have to ride rough shot, even if you have to go to Okija Shrine, even you have to kill for, for that. <laughs> Don't process. take me back. Those, <laughs> Don't take me back to those, me. <laughs> in my opinion, will not be positive kind of politicking. And I hear you loud and clear. The concept of Ali Baba and the 40 thieves is that true. Ali Baba is the head of the thieves. But you see, those other 40 thieves, you may eventually get one that will even be an emperor over and above, because he will be looking at what the old guy is doing, and then he too will be finding a way to cut corners. And then what then happened? You get into this kind of quagmire. I, I think 
overreaching ambition, over vaulting ambition is such that can make, again, okay, you said we should not go there, you know, I mean, I just wanted to draw um, inference from Macbeth, you know, Lady Macbeth, pushing Macbeth, and then, you know, uh, so they start seeing a lot of sorcerers. You wait and bid your time. You cannot and you should not, and I repeat, you should not um, try and begin to dance at the negative, okay, is it negative? The unfortunate happening to your fellow man. Here was a man that made sure he supported you to be the speaker and all that. I know the speaker was not acting alone. It was a groundswell opinion because everybody knew that lucky I that you were was going to be another lucky, um, good luck Jonathan. Was going to be a good luck Jonathan without raising a finger or just going to go in straight there. Oh, no, it's, it's, not going, it's not going to happen. So people started walking um, behind the scene. You talk about two signatures. Bonova, in 2023, how will you explain situations where something that is so glaring? And we must also know that, you know, there are boundaries. The ICPC, the EFCC will not just come and pounce. They may see certain things and they may, may be working on a lead. But if the National Assembly is in cahoot with maybe some party elements who are saying, go for it, it was, uh, it's not going to matter. But I, I want to say to you that if Aketi did not die, if Aketi did not die, on the 27th, the year about of this month, it will still be a, a kind of pyrrhic victory, and the whole world will now come on President Bola Tinumbu. You have no constitutional right or duty to now be saying you want to do whatever it is, and then the whole place will go into flames. But where you have the morality and the ethics in you, whatever is going to be yours is going to be yours without you necessarily trying to upturn the apple cart. If Aketi did not die, because I think nature wanted to preserve his legacy, that is the way I look at it, I guess we'll be shocked. If Yaradua did not die, I am very, very sure Despite uh, Professor Akiwili and the eventual Senate talking about the uh, doctrine of necessity, we we'll have had constitutional crisis in this country. And for that matter, if Sun Tai, that the whole world saw, was not capable for, for, for ruling, they, they would try and make sure that they put it there. In a vegetative state. So, it is us, those who surround, those who don't have that kind of sense of shame. I also think that as we move in the trajectory to try and help develop our democracy, we should give rewards and we should give punishments. Look, it's just not enough for us to say, okay, now everything is over. There were dramatic personae. I don't know who they are, even though I can get, well, well I'm guessing, shortly after no, selecting no. letters of resignation and all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, if the point is, they know that we know that quite a number of people know the arrowheads that were behind trying to set a place like Ondo State on fire. But, but, we should fish uh, them out. I'm not going to be asking for being vicious. No, no, but for them to be fished out and taught some punishment. Likewise, there will be a couple of people. It will even be the cook or the gardener. Who did one thing or the other to now then say, hey, wait a minute. I've seen some things that are untoward. They will have tried to shut him or her up. But in Those any, are the kind of people in, we in, should... In we any should, rule of law should, respecting society, agencies of state, especially agencies leading with the constitutional responsibilities of enforcing the law yes. and making sure that the law is not is not Perfect. flippantly yes. flippantly abused mm. ought to go into action that is why I, look 
you cannot go to you cannot go to Ondo State now to go and tell anybody to bring out the books that you want to be reconciling signatures. Um, we did, did it, this money come out. Where the, where was this sign? You can't do it. I can't do it. But there are agencies of state. You have the Nigerian Police Force recognized by the Constitution. You have. <laughs> Bola. I know. Bola. I may be sounding a bit. No, no, you are not naive. sounding. No, 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 you are not I, naive. I, I, I you are sound. You, you are sounding like somebody who has his head properly screwed up on the neck. Yes. Uh, how? How come? How, how this? How that? Please. Yes, you see. The devil. The, the intelligence community. The devil. About five or six agencies in the, the intelligence the, community. The devil is, is in the details. So let's take. Okay, let's take. Um, um, Arakuni. They said Arakuni is ill. So you want the police to go into the house and go and look for him. And then somebody now says, no, you can't do that. You can't disturb his peace. You can't do this. But he's dead now. No, before he died. Uh, no. Uh, so I many things went on. The reality. I see people see say, look, what is exactly, what exactly is going on here? I do not think... <laughs> Okay, I had certain things here. I had certain things there. You have to go to some kind of court to prove that your fears are real and that you have a local standee to say, I said, that is the, that's Mr. President's, uh, sorry, that is uh, um, uh, the governor's signature. During Yaradua's time, when, according to what we read, he was going to come in, all lights were put off and then he was put, put there in the room Believing that, look, let's continue to just lie upon lie upon lie until Oba Sanjo, it was that eventually said he went to uh, Saudi Arabia and said, this man that I am seeing, that gave a bit of a Philip. The point I am making, may we all not be confronted with things that will not only destroy our legacy, destroy our character, whether there are people who are close to us or people who are, you know, uh, not too close to us, or people who always even go ahead, uh, you know, the sorcerers and the babalawos and the dibias will come out and tell you, and then, you know, the soothsayers, the people who, who, who make predictions and say, look, even though you are, you are not feeling fine, I see a situation where you continue to rule. You saw what happened during the um, um, Arakunis. Uh, you saw somehow a dirty thing came out. We don't want to talk about all that, but a dirty thing came out uh, when somebody was accused. A lady was accused that uh, you know she was uh, you know a friend to Mr. Governor and she was smuggling some things in there. And before you could say Jack and Robinson, is therefore the reason why whether ICPC was able to do what it needs to be done or not, whether EFCC, whether the police and everybody will not be saying it's your duty, it's your duty. Mr. President has that, look, indirect constitutional uh, provision let, let, let to make sure you, that ask. peace and order let, is restored. No, and he can try and influence, he can force, he can try and influence as a gentleman, gentle uh, ladies, uh, let, please, let's make sure I, I we allow you, common sense to breathe. Yeah. I, I think it's imperative at this juncture to speak to the fact that it is indeed a travesty for us to expect to grow this democracy to robustness, if ordinarily it would take the nod of the president to let institutions and agencies of state do, do their work. Do what they need to do. This is, that is my fear. Now, that is your fear, but that is the reality. It therefore means, and I, I come back to, to the ground rules here, my ground rule is that democracy, I don't know whether our cosmos is such that we, we can't practice democracy, is, is somehow alien to us. We are much more um, yeah, attuned with then the, the theory is, of, of, of strong man. Then the question is, we had military rule. Mm -hmm. We did not develop that much. Yes. Unlike in other parts of the world. Yes. You know, if I were to be living in China today, mm -hmm. I know, if I were to be living in China today and I don't have all the liberty to speak as I freely speak mm. in Nigeria, mm. at least I will be, I will be psychologically, emotionally, 
I'm financially compensated with the fact that, you know, my nation is globally respected. We are, you know, we are eating the markers, the big markers, developmental-wise, physical infrastructure and otherwise, and the economy for the, the longest period in human history took out 800 million people out of, out of gross poverty and put them in, in, in the middle class. Because, 800. Because the biggest number of people to have been taken out of poverty in the history of humanity. Because we had a totalitarianism that which, also... Which will compensate for the development and the positives will compensate. also has a human heart. In Africa, we had a... Uh, Mobutu Seseko, he had all <laughs> absolute <laughs> powers. Our neighbor here, um, Paul Bia, um, even if he has to now continue to genuflect, you must stay there. You, 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 now there you go die and all that. So, uh, again, I may be sounding like this, this, no. The truth of the matter is that we have to redefine our democracy in a way that it will surely work for us. We go every four years to do no, this uh, is elections. Not... <laughs> we go every four years, we, we fight. At the end of it all, the Supreme Court will now decide who is going to be placed where, here and there, and then we continue to now that. I think, at the end of the day, back to the subject, death, ultimate death, has rewarded Harakuni. Ah, that is not close yet to... Uh, <laughs> now, uh, I, I know... I need to wind down. I know, I know, I know the, way, uh, the way you are looking at it. It, can, it, it, it can happen again somewhere. No, it no, happens no, during no, year no, as well. Not necessarily again somewhere. Even in the case of Harakuni, that chapter is not close yet. No, I thought you said... Uh, <laughs> no, he's dead. <laughs> you know, he's dead, but as we speak... The dramatic person now. A apart from the dramatic personnel, uh, there will be opportunities for people to review the circumstances of his death and the complicity or not of his role in the obvious madness that ravaged the state for weeks, if not months, before his final demise. As much as I think I will, I understand what you are saying, uh, I was not there and all that kind of stuff. But I make bold to say something. Aketi is not likely to be a part and parcel of all those shenanigans that happened after him. That much I that that, that much I, I have a feeling. It's difficult because you are not going to ask me. I mean, if, if we're in court now, you say what, what is my evidence and stuff like that, and, and I could. Uh, no, we can't even. We can't even the, the, truth, it the truth of the, of the but, matter is that we had a man of character. We had a man who, when he was hale and hearty, made it point blank who his deputy should be. He made it point blank and openly prayed. All the other things that happened that uh, Aida Tiwa was being overreaching and all that kind of stuff were trumped up. It's obvious that they were trumped up. At the point, I saw a picture of Ara Kunia Kredolu with the governors of Oyo, Ogun, and Lagos State. Lagos State. And he seemed to be a man that was about himself. He may not be fully healthy, but at least he, he was obnobbing with them. My brother, the jury is out. Bola, we, we are, Bola, I give you, I give meeting, you the opportunity to wrap it up. That meeting that you mentioned was also... Um, the governor of um, Ekiti State. And if you, because I saw the picture, he was just, just tearing. Prostate cancer that we eventually had was the uh, cause of death. In a matter of days, it can go terribly bad. Yaradua was prodded. I understood Yaradua was prodded in such a way that he could even say, yes, Sanu, and all that kind of stuff. Suntai was being made under this, this age of AI. After that, in a matter of days, high-level prostate cancer 
will just take you out I, like two man's stress. They will predict that. They will say, they will give you 10 days or whatever. And within 10 or 15 days, we'll be seeing signatures. We, coming we, have out. To, we have to. May the Lord up. God help us. My final word on this is that Nigeria is going to thrive. We are going to, we are going to get some of these things behind us. We used to have a country. We used to have people and leaders and those who have been led who understood the tenets of the rule of law and ethics. I am very sure it's going to come back. I hope, uh, I hope we're not over-romanticizing our past. Uh, I don't, to be honest with you, I see some signals that are very disturbing. But uh, we have to wrap it up.